Let's do one more word with Robert J. Sawyer, whose latest book is called Red Planet Blues, Murder on the Mean Streets of Mars. Our producer for the segment you just did on television, Greg Thurlbeck, did a Google search of your name. First thing that comes up, I don't even know if you know, I'm going to tell you. Try a free audio book. Yes. What's your reaction to an ad like that? Well, you know, the first time people started buying my name as a keyword for Google AdSense uh, was really kind of bizarre. That was audible.com. That is, put that up there. Audible has bought my name. Indigo in Canada has bought my name. Amazon in the States has bought my name. It's really kind of bizarre. Um, but what they're doing with Try the Free Audiobook, uh, you know, part of, I'll tell you the truth, part of the thing about all this free culture stuff is we're all bound by non disclosure agreements. I'm actually not allowed to discuss my financial arrangements with Audible. They're, very, they're owned so, by Amazon. So at least you have one. But I have one. Mm -hmm. And I do get compensated when somebody takes that free book. And, and what the deal is, you take a free Robert J. Sawyer book or any other title, mm -hmm. and you sign up for one of their plans where you get one or two books a month for a discounted rate. Um, we get well compensated for that. Audible, I, have, I love those guys. They're a, a revenue stream that didn't exist for most authors until quite recently. Uh, it used to be only the biggest New York Times bestsellers were done in audiobooks, and then they were done as abridgments because the physical medium, so either CDs or tapes, was so expensive. Now it's a, it's a new revenue stream of digital stuff. doesn't seem to cannibalize. Hmm. And but apparently it grows your audience as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe it finds does. a new audience it for does. your work. And, but I do get paid for the audiobook. And people say, oh, I bought your ebook, and they say it apologetically. I said, oh, no, I got paid by it for that. That's fine. Go ahead and buy it on Kobo or Amazon. Or but you'd rather, I assume, they buy it this way. I get the biggest piece of the pie when they buy it this way, right. um, partly because only, and because it's a holdover from the way contracts used to be done, publishing contracts are always the author's percentage based on the list price, the price that's printed on the flyleaf. Mm -hmm. All digital contracts are based on the actual selling price, so that if it's deeply discounted, your share goes down. For a while, Amazon.com in the States was selling uh, one of my earlier novels, uh, what, Awake, at uh, which in the U.S. was published at twenty-five dollars a copy, they were selling it at twelve fifty a copy. Hmm. But they were paying Penguin fourteen dollars a copy or fifteen dollars actually a copy to get it. They were taking a two dollar and fifty cents a that copy loss. Yeah. Well, it does if your goal is to be the sole retail channel for everything. Got it. If you undercut everybody else for long enough. There's nobody else. Everybody else goes out of business, and eventually and someday you, you make money. And then you set whatever price you want. But yeah. the point is, they were selling it for twelve fifty. I was still getting my royalty as if they'd sold it at the full twenty five. Huh. You recently had one of your older novels called Starplex. Yes. Offered in a book bundle. Yes. What does that mean? Well, it was myself and five other authors getting together and saying, "Well, I'll put a book in for two ninety nine flat, or you could pay your own price." Was the gimmick. But the minimum was two ninety nine. So three bucks, you get six ebooks. That's fifty cents an ebook if Great I'm doing deal. my math right. Great deal. Um, and if you paid ten bucks, you got two more additional ebooks. One of which was by Robert A. Heinlein, one of the great masters of the genre. Uh, and most people paid the ten bucks to get the bonus books as well. It did not have the splash that we were hoping for. And again, there's a non-disclosure agreement here, so I can't tell you the numbers, but we were all talking about, well, we'd heard this guy had done a bundle and it had made that. Bundles were cool for 15 minutes. Their 15 <laughs> minutes is already up, I think. Hmm. Um, also, one of the problems is when you start bundling with other artists, it gets quite disparate. You get a grab bag, and people's reading tastes don't tend to be a grab bag. Mm -hmm. They like Rob Sawyer, if they like Rob Sawyer, there are a half dozen other science fiction writers they like. And if they're not part of that bundle, they don't look at it that they're getting Rob Sawyer for 50 cents, they look at it that they're buying this boat anchor of stuff around <laughs> Rob Sawyer, or Kevin Anderson, or whoever else was in the bundle, Frank mm -hmm. Herbert, uh, they want that and not the other stuff. It's not been as effective as we hoped. Uh, your book bundle, Tell us how that compares to this new BitTorrent bundle concept. I gather there's a best-selling author, Tim Ferriss, who's trying out an audiobook for The 4-Hour Chef. Yeah, he's most famous for The 4-Hour Workweek, which he, in fact, quotes me in The 4-Hour Workweek. I'm a big Timothy Ferriss fan. Uh, and he's got this deal where if you give him your email address, which entitles him to send you content, uh, you can get the opening chapter of his audiobook. A lot of people have done freebies like that before. The fact that it's associated with BitTorrent 
which has a huge profile, is kind of interesting. But I don't think it's enough of a dangle. You know, you can go to audible.com and hear the opening of any audiobook. Right. You can go to Amazon or Chapters online and read the first chapter of any book in print. Uh, the fact that I'm saying to you, hey, here's, here's the opening of my thing for free. Yeah, tell me another. Big deal. Yeah, big deal. Got it. Uh, several of the people who commented on your blog that we talked about on television are the days of the full-time novelist numbered. Right. Suggested that serialization might be a way forward for authors. Do you think that could work? You know, uh, Stephen King tried doing serialization, and he did it in a way that, all due respect to Stephen King, who was trying to be a pioneer, has damaged this as a possibility. Huh. Because he was serializing a novel and said, you know, as long as the payments keep coming in, I'll keep writing chapters. But they didn't. But they didn't. And so what we have now is the same phenomenon in print. George R. Martin has scared some people too, right? Game of Thrones mm -hmm. guy. I've uh, known George, George for 20 years. R. R. Martin, I think. R. R. I, I thought I said both R's. George <laughs> Railroad Martin, as we call him in yeah. the trade. Uh, the double R man. Uh, he um, is, you know, quite significantly behind in releasing volumes according to the schedule his readers would like. Mm. And I've had endless number of people say to me with my own most recent trilogy, I'm waiting till it's over. I don't trust that the whole thing will be done. So they don't they, want to make the emotional investment in something and then... Because of, yeah. sadly, George, and because of Stephen King's, uh, Stephen King holding you hostage. If you don't keep paying, you won't get the ending. <laughs> And with George, well, I'm just taking my good sweet time. And, you know, as Neil Gaiman famously said about George, George Martin is nobody's, excuse me, bitch, which is true, he <laughs> isn't. He should write at his own artistic pace. Mm -hmm. But it's had an effect where serialization, go, eh, am I really going to get it? Mm -hmm. Are all the parts going to come? Interesting. Is it possible? I mean, we are where we are. Yeah. Is it possible to return to a system where people are willing to pay enough? for authors to write books. You know, the big thing is that here's Red Planet Blues, Penguin Canada, $30 hardcover. The manufacturing cost of the book, we all know, is about a couple of bucks. My share is a couple of bucks. The bookstore's share is usually about 50% of that cover price. Um, there are all kinds of economies that are happening that should reduce the unit cost in electronic distribution. Mm. Ebooks, this is 30 bucks as a hardcover, $18 as an ebook in Canada. But you got nothing to show for it at the but, end of the day. But, except for a really good reading experience. A really good experience. No, no, but, but you're right. But you don't the, have a tangible you, object. You don't have a piece of art to put on your bookshelf. And what we have now is yeah. this tension between publishers saying we don't want to cannibalize the old market, yeah. and so we're not bringing down the prices of the new material. So I'm competing at 18 bucks with, say, Hugh Howey, who is doing um, his hugely successful self-published material at $2.99. Hmm. And I got to say, well, you know, maybe I'm a bit better than Hugh Howey. And somebody else might say, yeah, but are you three, are, are you, uh, you know, six four times? Four or five times better, yeah. Four or five, six yeah. times better than him. And I got to say, maybe not, <laughs> right? You know, I can't, I can't justify the price. And if the hmm. author can't justify the price to his audience, we have a problem there. If everybody was willing to accept the fact that a song is 99 cents. We've, we've been inculcated in that. We yep. know that. A song is a buck. And that an e-book is five bucks. I think the market would be healthy. And trying to convince people that you should pay for uh, a, a non, a digital product, what you paid or the bulk of what you paid. Because remember, yeah, it's 30 bucks if you buy it full price. But if you buy it online, you're not paying 30 bucks for the book. You're getting to a point where there's negligible and sometimes even uh, you pay more, ultimately, for the e-book than you do for the, the paper book, and that's just nuts. So yeah, if we get the price down to a point where everybody says, five bucks, I can see that, makes sense to me. And when the publishers start saying, as they say right now, that the print publishers are all adamant across the board, the big five, used to be the big six before the Penguin Random House merger, 25% mm -hmm. of net proceeds, that's the author's share. We authors don't think that's right. We're all advocating for 50%. It's an even split. You used to bring the bulk of the stuff to the table when you were distributing. Now you're not even doing the distribution, you're just turning over a digital file mm -hmm. to Amazon or to Chapters or to Kobo. They're doing the distribution for you. Don't take three quarters of the money for sending an email with our file attached. Right on. Thanks, Robert J. My pleasure. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.